This is the new BMW 1 Series, and it's a little bit like the KFC vegan burger. You see, when this was first bought out, KFC fans were like, hey, what are you doing? It, it's not got chicken in it. You, you can't do that. The previous version was rear wheel drive, and so when this was announced as front wheel drive, the BMW fanboys were like, what the what are you doing? You can't do that. It's not rear wheel drive anymore. But just like the KFC vegan burger, which turned out to be their most popular version, this could be the same. It could prove very, very popular. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers. CarWow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. The new BMW 1 Series starts from £24,500. That'll get you the 118i in SE trim. This is the 118D in sport trim, and it's £27,000. Of course, you don't want to pay that price, do you? Click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow, because there you can save almost £3,000 off a new 1 Series. Now, if you know someone who's looking to buy a new car, get them to Google CarWow, because me and my team are there to help them decide which car to buy and ensure they get a good deal on it. Let's talk about the design because the fact that this car is now front wheel drive rather than rear wheel drive has dictated the way it looks. For instance, with the old version, its engine was lengthways, which meant it had to have a long bonnet, which made it look unique. This one has its engine sideways, which means it doesn't take as much space, so it has a shorter bonnet and looks less unique, apart from the huge BMW grille, which is bigger than it really needs to be. The front design of it, in my opinion, is it's all right. This is the sports model, so the SE doesn't look quite so sporty. The sports one then has like these extra black bits of trim here. Then there's the M Sport, which looks sportier still. And then the M135i, which is sportier yet again. One thing I'm not so sure about, these flaps here, it's sort of like it's wearing one of those dress shirts you wear with a tuxedo. Shaken, not stirred. The engine layout also dictates the side profile of the new One Series. It's just a bit generic now. It could be from any brand. The only thing that's really BMW is the Hofmeister Kink, though even that isn't really that BMW. As ever, as you move up the range, you get bigger alloy wheels. So you start off with 16s on the SE. These are 17 inches on this Sport. And the M Sport and 135i get 18s, which look better. There is one angle of the new One Series which I prefer than the previous generation car, and that's the rear. The old one just never looked quite right, whereas this one, it's quite smart. In fact, it just looks a bit like a 3 Series Touring. As ever, as you move up the range, you get more sporty look to the bumpers and stuff like that. And I can't fault BMW for fitting real as illustrated by the car wire sticker truth, exhaust pipes. Oh, both of them. Now, if you have the M135i, you get slightly larger exhaust pipes as well. Good to see that they're not fake like you get on blooming Audis and Mercedes. Bravo BMW, for that at least. Let's talk about engines, which is very exciting, especially when they say twin power turbo on them. Petrols, you get a 118i, which has a 1.5 litre three cylinder turbo with 140 horsepower, or a two litre turbo with 306 horsepower in the range topping M135i. Then there's the diesels. There's a 116d with a 1.5 litre three cylinder with 116 horsepower or the 118D, which is what this is, with a two litre diesel and 150 horsepower, where you can get a higher power version of that two litre engine with 190 horsepower. You can get the car with either a manual or automatic gearbox, and four wheel drive is available on the high performance engines. This 118D is supposed to do 0-60 in 8.3 seconds, but I'm gonna find out what it really does. So I've got my timing gear of the specialist variety. What I'm gonna do is hold on the brake, build up the revs, let go of the brake. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin, because I've got it in sports mode. It's not feeling particularly quick. But I'm at 60. It's kind of leisurely. So let's do 8.4. With wheel spin, I got 8.5. That'll do. Here on the inside, this new One Series is a lot nicer than the old version, though it's still not quite as cool looking as a Mercedes A-Class, though the material quality and build quality does feel more robust. Oh yes, that's all solid, and that's really squidgy, and that's squidgy, and that's super comfy. Lovely, there is no wobble from the centre console at all. Very, very sturdy. BMW seems to just nail the position of all the key switches and stuff, so I can just jump in a car, not be familiar with it, and just operate it. Dead simple, so heating, lights, stereo, and driving stuff. Easy to get comfy as well, because there is lots of adjustment in the driving seat. And of course, being a BMW, you get the extendable seat bases where you can gather all your crumbs. There's lots of adjustment in the steering wheel as well. So even if you're big or small, you should be able to get comfy behind the wheel. It's here in the back seats that you really feel the benefit. Front wheel drive, 
just takes up less space than rear wheel drive. So that means you've got more space for the interior and especially those people in the back seat. So knee room is actually pretty decent and you can sort of stretch your legs out a bit under the seat in front. Headroom, it's all right for me. People over six foot may find it a little bit tight and will probably be a bit better off in a more boxy Volkswagen Golf. And if you click on the pop out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the new Golf. If you need to carry three at once, the Golf is also slightly better, but this is doable. There isn't too much of a big hump in the floor and the middle seat's sort of comfy. The sides do curve in a bit, so people at the sides are pushed outwards and they will end up with their heads a little bit like that, which isn't so good. It's, it is a bit better in the Golf. The windows, they go all the way down, though the sill is quite high, so real small kids may still find it a bit tricky to look out, but they're gonna be in the booster chairs anyway, so they should be all right. This still feels like a genuine premium car here in the back all squidgy there and there none of that in the golf it's all cheap plastic Look, we've even got proper metal handles and the seat fabric itself the bits that aren't leather feel lovely i'm actually quite impressed boot time the capacity of the one series is boot is 380 litres which is the same as an audi a3 and a volkswagen golf and 10 litres more than a mercedes a-class though those numbers probably mean nothing to you what it does mean is that you can fit probably four of these airplane hold you know the things that you put over your head in the airplane luggage items in there <laughs> now there is some extra storage underneath here as well which is good i can keep my expensive burberry items outside and you probably notice there's a bit of a load lip but it's not too difficult to lift things over it now there are some features in the boots we've got those metal rings to tie stuff to there's some hooks for your shopping and a net area there then there's some other extra items as well such as oh look a strap 12 volt socket and this scuff plate but those three items actually come as part of a comfort pack which costs 600 pounds you don't get them as standard nor do you get the electric tailgate as standard that's part of an extended comfort pack which is 1500 quid and that brings me on to five annoying things about this one series adjustable lumbar support is not standard on any model so if you want a bit of extra comfort in your lower back you have to pay 150 pounds for it which is a bit mean on a car that starts from over 24,000 pounds what the actual f is going on with these dials so they sort of look digital you do have a digital screen in the middle which is really low def why even try to make it look digital it's this is so shit. the parking camera is permanently exposed it's going to get covered in dirt which means that when you try and reverse after you've been through a mucky puddle you're not going to see anything where's the armrest in the back it doesn't appear to be one why haven't they fitted it where's it gone i demand to rest my arm the new one series is only available as a practical five door, and like the old model, you can't also get a three door, which is a shame because look how cool it would have looked. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. You can get this car with an optional heads up display and it's absolutely blooming massive, which is quite unusual for a car of this size. If you've got a phone with NFC technology like my Samsung Galaxy S10, you can actually use it as a car's key and unlock the car with it. Look, there we go, brilliant. And then you just shove that in a tray in the centre console and then you just press a button to start the car. It even works if you run out of phone battery somehow or other. Check this out, right? Load cover, need to fill the boot up, want to hide it away. It doesn't actually blooming fit! You know what that means, don't you? I'll teach him. Are you sure it doesn't fit? Go get the parcel shelf. Sorry, BMW. Oh, God, why do I have to do everything right all the time? They've actually been really clever and given a specific cutaway to match this. It does fit under there. You can even fold that up out of the way when you're messing around with it. Well done, BMW, well done. Sorry about throwing your thing. As standard, the One Series fuel tank has a 42 litre capacity, but you can pay an extra 50 pounds to have it increased to 52 litres, which means that on this 118D, you can go a further 123 miles between Phillips. Now you get that increased fuel tank size on the 120D and M135i standard. The seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox you can get with the 118i and 116D uses a special low viscosity oil to reduce drag and therefore help reduce your emissions and improve your economy. Let's see what this little one series is like to drive, starting off with round town. So the steering is pretty light. It's quite easy to manoeuvre this thing actually because you've got good all round visibility. As for the turning circle, eh, you know, it's, it's fairly tight, not quite as tight a turning circle that you get with an Audi A3. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my video about the new Audi A3. So if you're really into like making lots of U-turns, you know, you can't quite decide where you want to go. An Audi A3 might be a bit better 
What I can't fault this car for though is the suspension. So this is the normal suspension on this car and over potholes it's really good. And even when I go over like this weird cobbledy surface, which I don't know where you're gonna experience that. If you're at a proving ground like me testing cars and you find the worst bit that you can to drive on, it'll still cope. <laughs> Let's just put it that way so you can be fine with it on the road. Then there's the gearbox. I'm not a big fan of BMW's manual gearboxes. The auto's good. So whether you're just maneuvering at low speed or whether you're on the motorway, it's fine. Speaking of the motorway, let's go check it out at higher speed. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is put the car into manual mode. There we go. Okay, it's locked in third gear at 40. I'm now gonna accelerate. And the engine has quite a lot of low down shove, but then towards the top of the rev range, it runs out of punch. What happens if you need to just overtake and you got it in just normal drive mode? So once again, 40, what's the kick down like of the automatic gearbox? Kick down, pretty decent actually. It's not bad, this gearbox. Then when you're up to speed, don't really get much wind noise at all. You do get a little bit of tire noise though. I think there's more tire noise than in the Mercedes A-Class. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Well, I can't fault those, the economy. I'm averaging almost 47 miles per gallon. Now the car is supposed to do 56 miles per gallon, but real world driving, 47, that's fine. What about on a twisty road though? It's gonna go to sports mode, which is gonna add a little bit of weight to the steering. I'm gonna put it into manual mode of the gearbox. You don't have the same sensation of being pushed out of a corner like you do in the old BMW 1 Series because that was rear wheel drive. But apart from that, I actually think it feels more playful and more fun. You do sit quite low in the car, so it does feel sporty. Getting to corner a little bit too fast. If you lift off the accelerator, it does that thing where the weight moves forward and it pivots and it tightens its turn. It is quite a playful thing. I actually think it drives better overall than the previous one series. Now, I know all the BMW fanboys will be going, well, wait a minute, rear wheel drive is always better. Well, actually, this car has proved that it's not. And let's be honest, the reason why BMW made the step of making the one series front wheel drive is because most of the people who bought the last one didn't even know it was rear wheel drive anyway. So, there. Being a BMW, you can, of course, turn the stability control all the way off, which means I should be able to skid it. So let's give it a go. It's not going. Why's it not going? Oh, it's front wheel drive, isn't it? Probably have to do it in reverse and then it becomes rear wheel drive. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Here we go. Rear skids. Right, that's enough, I'm starting to feel sick. It might not be able to do donuts. It's front wheel drive, but it still drives blooming brilliantly. So this one series does indeed deserve the tag, the ultimate driving machine. If only the designers were as good as the engineers. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this new BMW 1 Series is front-wheel drive rather than rear-wheel drive like the previous generation model. It actually shares its chassis with the X1, the X2, the Mini Countryman and the Mini Clubman. Now you can get four-wheel drive versions of it, so the 120D is available with optional X-Drive and the M135i has X-Drive as standard. And that is normally front-wheel drive when you're driving along, but if it needs some extra grip at the back, it can send 50% of the power to the rear wheels. All versions of the BMW 1 Series get fully independent rear suspension. That is not the case on its competitors such as the Mercedes A-Class and the A3, which only have fully independent rear suspension on the most expensive versions, whereas the cheaper versions have a torsion beam, which is a bit like tying your legs together at the knees. You're not so agile. If you're cornering really hard and you start to lose traction on the inside wheel and it begins to spin up, the car will automatically brake it slightly to send the power back to the outer wheel, which has more grip, and it can respond very quickly to that slip happening. The M135i goes one better. It has a full torque sensing mechanical limited slip differential at the front to ensure power is always sent to the front wheel with the most traction. M Sport versions of the car have upgraded brakes. They also have lowered stiffened sport suspension. And if you have a manual version, they have shorter throws for their manual gearbox. Now you can fit the car with adaptive dampers. It's only available on the 120D and the M135i, but it does improve the ride quality and makes the car feel a bit sporty at the same time.
Now let's talk about in-car technology. So as standard, the One Series gets this nine inch infotainment screen with inbuilt satellite navigation. You also get Apple CarPlay and from summer you'll be able to get it with Android Auto as well. The infotainment system itself is actually the older generation of BMW iDrive. So while it's quite easy to operate and swivel through and control it, it's just not quite as good as the very latest version, which you can get by paying an extra thousand pounds and then you get a 10 inch screen, sharper graphics and a quicker operating system. You also then get the fully digital dials. They're not the best, the ones that you can Get. The ones that you get are standard though, I mean, I don't think I need to talk about them anymore. You know how disgusted I am with that. Blech. As for connectivity, there's a USB port there. You've got a 12 volt socket here. Charging pad there for your mobile phone if you pay an extra 350 quid. Under here, there's another USB port and two down there. Now let's talk a little bit more in detail about this car's practicality. If you fold down the rear seats to carry larger items, you'll notice that you have a continuous floor. Now this isn't like completely flat, but it's not too bad. You can still push things easily from the back of the car towards the front when you're loading it. And I like how they have the seat belt separate so they don't get snagged when you put that back like that. If you need to carry small children, and lots of stuff in the car. This is pretty good because you have ice fix anchor points here on the front passenger seat, or if you have triplets, there's still the normal two anchor points in the rearmost seats, and the covers for them are flipper, dead easy to actually mount the seat. It also helps the fact that you've got wide doors, so it's quite easy to fit even bulky seats there in the back. Finally, we come to the moment you've all been waiting for. In car Kirby spaces, yeah. So glove box, it's an all right size, and there's my gloves in the glove box. Who'd have thought it? That's unusual. Cup holders are an all right size, but they're not that deep, but not that shallow either. So perfect. Under here, there's enough room for what looks like a random woman's running shoe. Yeah. Then over here, a little cubby area, which is handy for keeping your ante back after you touch someone's random running shoe. The door bins, huge in the front, and also huge in the back and then there's a net there just fine just there on her own on the back of the seat don't mind her the range kicks off with the se and that gets led headlights cruise control normal air conditioning and front and rear parking sensors as standard as well as the nine inch infotainment screen Next up is the Sport, and it gets some more supportive body-hugging sport seats, which are lovely. There's also interior mood lighting, and the lights shine through these panels here and on the dash. There's also dual-zone climate control. Then there's the M Sport, which gets a heated sport steering wheel and various other visual and interior upgrades. Finally, there's the M135i, which gets a raft of performance upgrades and a proper digital driver's display, rather than these rancid DARS. I think you're getting the idea now that I'm not very fond of them. Of course, being a BMW, there's lots of options to choose from and they're all grouped into packs and there's loads of different packs here. In fact, so many, I'm not going to bore you with them. Instead, what I'm going to do is build my ideal BMW 1 Series engine, trim and option combination and then get a deal back from our trusted dealers on CarWow for a good price on one. And if you want to see what that car is and the deal I've got for you, click on the pop-out banner up there to go check it out. So there, what's my final verdict on the new BMW 1 Series? Should you avoid it? Lock. <laughs> should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the 1 Series. So it's sort of lost its USP by going front wheel drive. And it looks as generic as a contestant on X Factor, but it's still a really, really good car. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.